Hi everyone. I'm so glad that you can join me on this journey to learn how to program in Go. You're going to be amazed at how quickly we will be able to build surprisingly sophisticated programs. But in this first installment of Programming for Lovers, we're going to begin with how all programming courses start, which is writing our first program to print Hello World to the console. To do so, we're going to need to learn how to install Go, along with a text editor that's going to make working with Go a snap. As always, if you enjoy what you see, please like, subscribe, and join our course at programmingforlovers.com. Let's code. To get started, you need to download two things. First, you need to download the Go programming language. So you can find this page online, and this is going to have featured downloads that will have the Go programming language, regardless of what your operating system is. Secondly, we're going to work with a text editor when we program in Go. And a fantastic text editor that I would suggest is called Visual Studio Code, or VS Code for short. Here's the download page currently for VS Code. Download and install both Go and VS Code. And when you've done that, you're ready to continue on. In the meantime, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. If you have successfully installed Go on your machine, then what I'm going to do is open up a terminal window in Mac, or if you're working in Windows, this may be called Command Prompt. So there is an application on your machine that you should find, uh, in, in on Mac it's in the utilities package called Terminal. And this allows us to run command line commands. We're not going to run a ton of command line commands, but when we when it comes time for us to compile and run our code, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you two command line commands that I want you to run. And these are critically important. Number one, I want you to run the command go space env and hit enter, and that will run it. Now this is going to give you a lot of advanced stuff that we're not necessarily going to use, but there's one important aspect of this. And that important aspect is what the go path variable is. So when you install go, go will always look for your code by default in one place. If you wind up putting your code elsewhere, then we're going to have to get really hackery and you're going to have to delve in and tell go precisely where your code is. By far, I always suggest to students, just take where Go is already by default looking for your code and put your code there. You can always create a backup of it somewhere else, but this is where Go is going to by default look at your code. And on a Mac, it's going to be under users, and then my username, which here on this computer is Philip Campo, and then slash Go. That is Go telling us that it is looking for our code there. If you're working on a Windows machine, it's going to be something similar. It might be under your hard drive, and then users, and then your username, and then Go. So... Um, this also tells you if you don't see all this stuff printed, that's because you didn't successfully install Go. So if you have Go installed, you'll see some version of all this get printed out. The second thing that I want you to do is run one more command. This is going to turn off modules. And uh, there, this is an important feature of Go, but it's not really an important feature for the first 100 hours of programming in Go, and it's going to make our work much easier. So the second critical command that I would like you to run is a similar command, which is go space env, but then also uh, dash w and then go 111 all caps module all caps equals no space off. Run that. You shouldn't see any output because uh, if so, that's been done successfully. We may talk about Go modules much later in the course, but for now, it is the most helpful. If they're turned off, everything will work nicely for us. And I'll say something about that much later. But for today, that's all we need to do. Now that we know that we've installed Go and we've got it working and we know where Go is going to look for our code, now it's going to be time for us to write our first program, which means let's open up Visual Studio Code and take a look. So I'm going to close out my browser. And if you open up VS Code, you're going to see what we have here. So there's a number of options on the left. And uh, probably you will see an open folder option here 
on the left. So that's what I want to do. I want to open up a folder because this is going to allow me to navigate among my code using the built-in Explorer, file explorer that is provided by VS Code. So this is just a, after what I see when I open VS Code and I click on open folder and it probably will default to my home users slash Philip Compo directory, which is good. And you will see this is the directory that Go is expecting our code. We don't have any code there, so we need to create a new folder in this directory and we need to call that folder lowercase go. I'm going to create that and that's the file that I'm going to open. So that is where our code is going to go. I'm going to create three directories within our Go folder. So I'm going to create a new folder within Go and it's going to be called SRC. That's where our source code is going to go. So the code that we're about to write is going to go there. I'm also going to create um, two additional folders called BIN that's going to have um, executable files. So once we create programs that we want to run, BIN can contain those. We're going to work largely in this course with SRC. Um, and then I'm going to create a PKG folder as well. This is for once we start writing a bunch of functions, if we want to reuse them and uh, pre-compile them, that this is a way of, of, of placing all that code into PKG. But what we're going to be interested in is SRC. And in SRC, this is where I want to create a folder uh, that's going to contain the code that we write in this initial code along where I'm just going to have a program that prints hello world to the console. So for that reason, the directory that I want to create is going to be called hello. And then I want to create a file within that directory. So I'm going to create a file in there that Go is able to recognize. So Go recognizes files that end in .go as having code that we can run. And so let's call that main.go. You'll see that that file gets created over there on the left. And now we're ready to start writing our first program. Except I would like you to do one more thing. And that one more thing is, um, let's add an extension. So an extension is like an extra package for VS Code that's going to, in this case, when I type in Go and search for the Go extension, when I install that package, it's going to have a lot of built-in nice features for us where it'll highlight our code uh, nicely, for example, and have uh, some suggestions as we write our code. That's gonna be really good. So make sure to install that extension as well. In the meantime, I'm gonna close that and I am ready to write my first program. So the first thing that I want to do is to indicate to Go that the code that I'm about to write, and I'm gonna go back to the file navigator over here, the code that I'm about to write, it's going to be runnable. And how I indicate that to Go is with the declaration at the top, package main. I'm also going to be printing something here, and so um, I'm going to need to import some code from an external package that's gonna do that printing, and that package is going to be called FMT. Okay. Um, the next thing that I want to do is actually write my code to print hello world to the console. So that code is going to go into what's called func main. Func main is the area of your code where stuff is going to get run. So if you have anything that you want to have run in your code, this is where we're going to put it. And in particular, what I would like to do is to print hello world. So I'm going to do that by saying FMT is going to be the package that I need. Then I have dot, and then I have the command from the FMT package called print LN. So this is going to print hello world onto a, a single line and then uh, print that onto a line. This is all that the program is going to do. So there is only one line of code in Funk main. And after that line of code has been executed and hello world has been printed to the console, then the program is going to end. So a very important thing that I need to do is, and this is going to seem uh, perhaps obvious, but I myself have fallen into this many a time. So I need to make sure that I save my code. So you'll see this white ball up there at the top. That is indicating to me that I have not saved my code yet. So once I save it, um, everything is okay. 
and I'm getting some additional suggestions for packages over here, which I could pay attention to. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to ignore those for now. The question is how to run my code. And I'm going to bring back briefly my terminal window where I was uh, setting the, the modules to off and also making sure that I had installed Go. When I look at my terminal, I'm going to see that I'm in this directory. This is my home directory. And this is pretty universal that when you create a new terminal, you start the terminal program, it's going to start you in home. And you will remember that on a Mac, um, within this, this is my user username, Philip Campo, within this place, Go was looking for this Go folder that I created. So the question is, how do I navigate into that folder? And I can navigate down into that folder with the command CD, um, and then I need to tell it where to go. So if I CD into Go, you'll see that I'm now in the Go folder. Um, if I wanted to, for some reason, go up a level, I could do CD dot dot. That's a good command to know, and that would take me back up a level. So I'm back in my home directory. Now I'll go back into the Go directory. Um, in particular, I don't want to just go into the navigate into the Go directory. I want to go into the source code directory within Go. Then I want to go into hello, and then that's where I want to go. So I can go straight into that hello directory if I cd into src slash hello. And you can see that I've successfully gone there because I know that directory exists, but also um, it's telling me that I'm in the hello folder. One other helpful command that you might like to know is ls. ls tells me what the current directory's uh, contents are. So in this particular case, it contains only the main.go file, which we just created. Uh, one other thing you might want to know is where are we currently? That command is pwd for present working directory, and it's telling me I'm in user slash philipcompo slash go slash src slash hello. And this is exactly where go told me I'm looking for your code. Now we're ready to run our code, and when we run code in go, there are two steps that we need to follow. First, we need to compile our code. And we compile our code to make sure that there are no syntactical issues that uh, and Go is going to check and, and ensure that the code that we have written is essentially grammatically correct. So we're going to be able to do that with the Go command and then build. And in this particular case, I did not have any compiler errors. So the code successfully compiled. And now it's going to be ready to run. You'll also see that if I list what's in the present working directory, I get two things. I get main.go, but I also got this new file, hello, which showed up over there. That file, hello, is an executable file. It's now runnable. And I'm going to be able to run this code. I'm going to do that in one of two ways, depending on whether I'm on a Mac machine or a Windows machine. If I were on a Windows machine, I could just run the command hello. And that's going to run because I'm in the directory that has this hello executable command. It will run that. On a Mac, it's very slightly different. I need to run dot slash and then whatever the name of the executable file is. When I do that, you're going to see, as we had hoped, hello world will get printed to the console and our program is complete. I just want to use an opportunity here to, to point out, I mentioned compiler errors, but I didn't show any compiler errors. Um, so one of the things that I might do is, for example, show these. I also want to show you a shortcut of how to run your code directly within VS Code so that you don't actually need a using a terminal window at all. There's going to be one built in. So let me show you that. If I pull this up, I'm going to have a terminal. And now you actually see Go here, and that's because Go uh, the VS Code has already sort of navigated us within the Go folder, which is nice. So if I were to say, what's my present working directory, I would see it's users, Philip Compo, Go. So that all I need to do then is cd into src hello. Again, I'm going to compile with Go build, 
and then I'm, I'm gonna run with dot slash hello because this is a Mac and I run my program this way. This is in practice probably what we're gonna use exclusively, although if you wanna use a separate command prompt or terminal application, you're more than welcome to. Let me show you a couple of compiler errors that are pretty common. So one thing that, that people might forget to do is forget to have FMT before your print line. And if I were to save that, uh, I get these commands. If I were to save that and then I tried to compile, and one shortcut that I'm gonna tell you is if you hit the up arrow, you, it will scroll you through previous commands. So in this particular case, if I hit the up arrow twice, I will get to go build. I don't have to retype it. And this will tell me FMT was imported, but not used. Um, so that is the statement here, but it also is giving me some helpful information, which is that this occurs on line four, uh, character two. So line four is here. And it says print line is undefined. So I don't know, the code does not know what print line is on line eight. So I can see that on line eight. So the compiler can sometimes seem opaque, but it is always telling you precise feedback about a specific line of code. So in this particular case, it's saying you didn't use FMT. I thought you were going to import it. Um, and I don't know what print line is. And the, both of these issues are resolvable by the same thing, which is to add an FMT dot before it. We'll talk a lot more about packages and why that dot is important. For now, I want to push uh, hit up again in the terminal and hit go build. And here you might be confused and say, well, I thought you fixed it, Philip. And I wanted to show you this as an example of the other type of issue that I often see with students, which is forgetting to save. So here I intentionally forgot to save. I now save and the white ball goes away. And now when I hit up, I'm gonna get compiled code once again. Um, one more thing that you might forget about, at least at this stage, is to forget about package main. So what if we were to forget about this code and I were attempt to attempt to save and run it? It's saying, well, I was expecting a package, but instead I found import. So on line three, I saw import, but I wanted to see package. And that's Go's way of telling you, well, you needed an initial statement here. And in this particular case, the initial statement that we needed was package main. So now I'm gonna go build and I will run one more time by typing in dot slash hello, which again on a Windows machine would just be hello. That is our first program. So if you made it this far, great job, congratulations. We've written our first program in the Go programming language. And more importantly, we have everything that we need to know to have to write much more complicated programs for the entire course. Everything that we're gonna do from this point forward, we're gonna use this built-in terminal in VS Code, and we're gonna use VS Code with that nice Go extension and put all of our code into Go SRC. So you have a whole lot more to do, an entire course to explore, and I just hope that you'll join me. But until next time, happy coding.